What's going on, family? Welcome to The Mix Online. My name is Chris. And my name is Langston. We are so excited that you've joined us today. We're bringing The Mix experience to you at home, right where you are. And we couldn't be more excited about it. That's right. Mm -hmm. We are a mix of people coming together to change lives and the world. We exist to move people from their past to passion and purpose, yeah. a full life in Jesus Christ. And while things in our world may be changing, know that our vision and mission will not change. The mix is still here and God is still using us. Yeah. Uh, if you're a first time guest, please text mix FTG to 94,000 so we can connect with you and stay in touch. Also, seriously, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like this video. Okay, look, first subscribe, like this video, and share it to your friends right now. Yeah. So your friends and family can enjoy this online experience with you. Yes, and we have more information to help you get in the mix. Check out these quick announcements, and then stay tuned for, for a quick message from our very own Pastor Marcus, and then we will begin our online experience. Hey, it's Marcus England, the lead pastor here at The Mix. And I just want to say to you, welcome to our online experience that's going to start in a few minutes. We're so grateful to be able to have you here and thankful that you're a part today. Uh, I, we really hope that this time together will bless you, that it'll be an encouragement to your heart with all that has been going on, with all that has been in the news. We believe that God's word is the best soothing for our hearts and our souls. And so today we're really looking for the opportunity to minister to you as God is ministering to us. We wanna let you know we're here for you during this time. We wanna pray for you, we wanna love on you. Uh, we wanna give you community where you may feel alone. And we also wanna be a resource in this time of need. If I can say to you nothing more that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love power and of a sound mind. And I'm grateful today that we had the opportunity to not walk in fear, but to walk in love, understanding that God is with us. Enjoy the experience today. Get up, worship, clap your hands, stomp your feet, do whatever you want to do, because this is an opportunity for us to really connect with God. I invite you to invite someone else to be a part of this experience, because I believe this is a moment that will change your life. Let's bless God together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Hey, Mix family, this is our online experience. Would you join us for worship as we lift up the great name of Jesus right where you are? Yeah.
Father, show us how to love. Show us how to have your heart. Show us how to be compassionate to those around us in this moment. We want to be the extension of who you are in the world right now. So, Father, give us that grace. Speak to us and show us how it is that we are to walk out this Christian life and impact our communities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. It is now time to get in the mix. family, we wanted to let you know that no matter what's going on in the world, nothing can contain the move of God. We will continue to share the love of God through relational evangelism and building relationships with one another. So we are excited that mixed groups are still forming and moving forward through online virtual mixed groups. We have the advantage of technology today, so what better way to check on one another, share and do life together with your fellow mixed group participants. To be a part of an online mixed group, simply pull out your phone, go to the Mixed Church app, select groups, and you can join a group. It's just that simple. And speaking of the Mix app, it is the best way to get into the mix and stay connected during this time. If you haven't already downloaded the app, do so right now. Now, I'm team iPhone, so I would just go to the App Store, but for those using Androids, you can go to the Google Play Store and get the app too. It is an amazing portal into the Mix community. Whether you are new to the Mix and want to be a part, or you are already in the Mix, listen, there is something for you. To see the latest sermons, you can check out our YouTube channel, you can join a Mix group, sign up to volunteer with our outreach efforts, and now for those with Mix kids, aged children, you will be able to access amazing prepared lessons for your child. Now, we want everyone, including our kids community, to continue to know God, and this is an opportunity for them to do so right there at home. So simply go to the Mix app, click on the connect button at the bottom, find the kids tab, and there you'll be able to access the age appropriate lessons for your child. Now, lastly, we wanna share that in these times, the church is called to love and assist our community like never before, and we have answered the call. We are creating food bags for families that are in need, and we need your participation. We need your help with donations of non-perishable items, as well as putting together the bags and, and even distributing them to families in need. Families are able to send a representative right here to our 1725 East Baltimore Street campus to receive their grab-and-go bags of food. Now, for more information on where you can drop off your donations or sign up to help stuff the bags or distribute them, stay tuned to the Mix app. And you can also stay in tune at themixchurch.com. Well, look, it looks like Pastor is ready to proceed, so let's focus on what he has to say. Well, welcome to our online experience here at The Mix. My name is Marcus England, and I'm the lead pastor here of this amazing church, and we are so glad that you took the time to be with us on this day. Let me say this to you. We are so excited, so excited that you could connect with us online. Even though we understand that we're not able to meet in a physical building, we recognize that the church is not contained to a building, but we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe I have something to share with you today to encourage your hearts, and I believe it's going to make an impact. If you can turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 22, and we're going to start at verse 39. And I think this passage of scripture is special into the week that we're going in, which we are followers of Jesus Christ and Christians call this Passion Week. This is the week that is leading up to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the scripture says this, and he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. I thought this scripture was really important for us to connect with. Because I wanted just to tell somebody this week, don't quit now. Don't quit now. No matter 
what it feels like or no matter what it looks like, don't quit now. Can I just pray with you before we go further? Father, thank you so much for this time together and thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that is not contained to a person or a place, but as throughout this world, I pray that hearts would be touched and lives would be changed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I am so excited to be able to share this moment and to share this time with you because I believe that as you have been looking at the recent weeks, on being able to know what the predictable is, you're trying to figure out what's ahead, what's to come, what's about to change. And I can say this to you, if you really knew what the week really was to look like, some of us would just be scared to go into it. If you, if you could be honest with yourself, sometimes we know we've got a heavy week ahead. We know there's some things that are going to impact us and change us, and we're just a little afraid to go into the week. But I'm interested to know that if you knew that there were some crazy things that were about to take place in your life, would you still go ahead to do what God called you to do? See, here's the thing. God has a plan and a, a, a destiny for you. He has a purpose over your life. But the idea is if you knew all of the plan, you may not even go through with it because it may be too heavy or it, it may seem too hard or it may seem uncomfortable. And honestly, we just like life to be as comfortable as possible if we could just be honest. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I want my week to be blessed. You, you know how it is. When, when we were in church, you would say, I'm coming on Sunday, so the rest of my week could be great. But what if you knew that the rest of your week wasn't going to be like you wanted it to be? What if you knew that there was going to be betrayal or, or friends that were, were, were going to leave you and people that were going to walk outside of your life? What would you do then? Would you try to change the circumstances that were about to occur, or would you continue to walk through the purpose and plan that God has for your life? I'm interested to know because if I could be honest with you, I, I don't like going through pain. And if, if, if you could be honest, none of us do. I, I can remember in life when I, I was graduating from high school, going into college, and, and, and I'll never forget, I started to get sick, and, and it was a moment where I, I was expected to walk into college and fulfill and, and do all the things that I thought was a part of the plan that God had for my life. I was going into engineering school, and I was excited, but I literally got sick the week prior to never forgetting, not being able to do much and, and, and just really feeling overwhelmed. And I'll never forget where I went into a store and you know those blood pressure cuffs that you got. I, I remember taking my blood pressure and it was sky high. The next day I went into the hospital and they let me know that uh, uh, Mr. England, your, your, your kidneys are failing. And I'll never forget the moment of not being able to be in control of a week or a month or years of circumstances that I wish I never had to go through. And had somebody told me I was going to go through it, I would tell you today, you know what, I'd rather not. But today I'm here because I understand that there is something that God did in my life then that I could not see now. And there's some things in your life that you're looking at and you're saying, I wish I never went through it. I wish that never happened. I, I wish that was never a part of my life. But if I could be honest, everything that has happened in your life has led up to the place where you are today. If, if, if you can really be honest, there are some hurts that got you to the place that you are today. There, there are some broken moments that got you to the place that you are today. And so while we don't want to feel pain, pain is necessary to get us to our destination. Pain is necessary to be a part of the story that God is telling that, that says that we can make it. We can go farther than where we are. And so I, I encourage you today, even though you might be feeling pain, don't give up because it's on your way to your destiny. It's on your way to a destination that God has set and planned for your life. I can only think about the moments where I would sit and I would be in the hospital 
bed or I would be at the, the kidney center and, and, and I would ask God, Lord, why would this happen to me? And, and maybe you're at home and maybe you're in a part of life where you're asking God, why would this happen to me? And God may not have ever answered you or he may not have heard what you wanted to hear. But I'm here today to let you know, just because you didn't get what you wanted doesn't mean you're not going to where you need to be. I'm here today to encourage you. Don't give up. Don't quit. I'm, I'm here to encourage someone that, that lost hope, that lost focus, not to give up because Jesus didn't give up. Can you imagine at the start of the week knowing the, the, the things that were about to take place, knowing that he would be crucified, he would be, he would be spat on, knowing that he would be hit and he would be executed for something he did not do. How many of us are willing to take the pain and, and willing to, to be hit and, and, and murdered just for the sake of others? Today, the Jesus that we're talking about is the Jesus that's done it for you. He's the Jesus that's done it for me. And he's the Jesus that will continue to keep doing it for each and every one of us. He is the God over our life and our circumstances so I don't want you to fear. I don't want you to give up because things look bad. There is something that you must look to. Our God is faithful. Our God is a sustaining God. Our God is a great God. And the Bible lets us know that Jesus was at the place where his assignment was so heavy that he needed time with the Father and in his statement, he says to him, Lord, if you can just take this cup from me, this cup, meaning this thing that I have to drink, what I have to take in, if you could take it from me, please do it. And if I could be honest, there are some cups that have come in my life that I wish I did not have to drink, that I wish that I've never had to take part, that I didn't even have to sit at the table to be a part of. If I could have avoided it, I would have. If I could have walked away, I would have. If I knew that it was in my week, I would have walked away. I would have avoided this part of my life. But there's something special about the way that God just allows for us to go through and to push and to not quit. And I know there's somebody that's on the verge of quitting today, but I'm just here today to let you know, don't quit. Be encouraged. Understand that God is with you. And the Bible lets us know that in that garden, he began to be in anguish so much that that sweat like drops of blood begin to fall. Man, life can get hard sometimes. Sometimes it can be tricky. You may be a single mom. You may be a single dad. You may be a family that uh, uh, it doesn't uh, unsure of how you're going to get to the next moment or do the next thing or, or you're not sure of how uh, life is really going to form out. But if I could tell you, don't quit. God called me to, to, to speak to you today. No matter where you are, don't quit. No matter how lonely you feel, don't quit. No matter how bad the circumstances are, don't quit because God is with you. I, let, let me tell you something. Everybody feels like quitting sometime. <laughs> Even the greatest champions that you see have felt like quitting Sometimes the, 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 the people that have won all the gold medals, the, the athletes, those that have been a part of great success, business owners and, and people all have felt like giving up. And that's where you may be. You, you may feel like you're the only one and, and you may feel like I, I, I don't want to be a quitter, but I'm here today to tell you your feelings are OK, but your actions must reflect that of one that cannot give up today. No matter where you are, don't give up. No matter how you feel, don't give up because God has this plan for your life. And I think we should approach the week like Jesus approached it. Knowing all that he had to endure, he did not give up. He did not let go. He stayed the course today. And so if I could tell you, just stay the course. Stay the course. No matter what it feels like, stay the course. Stay the course. Even though you know what's ahead may not feel the best. It may not feel great. It may not be what you want it to be. Stay the course. Get in there. Don't quit. And I believe that what God has in store for you, it will change your life forever. 
I'm here today to tell you that I'm in this space, not because of how strong I am, but because how, how great my God is. He kept me a mighty long way. I don't know if you remember that, but we used to say that a long time ago, being a church kid. He kept me a mighty long way. He kept me when things didn't look the greatest. He kept me when we didn't know what was next. My God is a faithful God. My God is a great God. My God will never leave me. My God will never forsake me. And my God is your God, so he will never leave you. He will never abandon you. He will never walk out on you. I don't care what the enemy is whispering. Our God is a faithful God. So stay strong in this moment. Stay, stay strong knowing even though you don't know what's ahead in the week, that God is with you. And I wanted to give a couple points to you, something to encourage you along the way as, as I was just thinking and reading and saying to myself, why do we quit sometimes? I started thinking it, it, it's, the, it's the overwhelming moments of life. It's when life gets overwhelming and life gets tricky. And, and can I say sometimes when we don't have the right direction to go? We, we scatter for anything. We look for anything to help us. And then fear. Fear puts us in the place oftentimes where we will find ourselves stretching and going and, and doing things we were never called to do. Some of you are finding yourselves in a desperate moment. I know I've been there before where you're, you're looking to see what can I do, how can I get something, how can I go further, but I'm here to remind you that our God said he'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So it's not according to what you have, it's not according to what's in the savings account, it's not according to what you've been so great at putting together. I'm here today to let you know it was God that supplied your needs when you did not have, and it's God that supplied your needs when you have plenty. It's God that will be there there for you when there is no job. There's God that'll be there for you when you have a job. There's God that'll be there for you when you couldn't see no way out of no way. And there's God that will be there for you when you see the next step. God is with you in every step of the way. So don't fear and don't fret. Trust in Jesus. He went through the week that we are talking about this Passion Week just for you and I. So that we could be here today, so that we could have hope and a hope that's everlasting. And, and so I, I started to think, well, what, what are some things that put us in the place where as we're ready to quit, what, what is our mindset? Because the Bible lets us know that our minds have to be renewed. Our minds have to be re, re, recharged and, and refreshed. And, and, and if you're in this moment in life, you might be saying, all I've been looking at is things that have broken my mind and my spirit. Spirit. But I'm here today to say, refresh your mind, renew your mind, renew your spirit of what God wants to do. And one of the first points that I want to give you is in order to stay connected to the purpose and destiny that God has for your life, you've been called to remove all other options of what you could do. Mm. Stop going into the week with another option. The only option is the option that God is giving you. So stick with that. Say, say I'm, I'm planted. I, I know what I want. I know where I am. I know what I want to do. I am staying where God has called me to stay. And can I tell you where God has called you to stay may look a little short. It may look a little distant. It may look like there's not enough resources, but our God has all the resources that you need. He can supply all your needs. He can fulfill every area of your life. Don't you worry. He might feed you by the day, just like he said he feeds the ravens. But I'm here today to let you know, as long as God is with you, you will never have to fear. You must stay connected to what God has called you to do. So number one, remove all options. Stop giving the enemy spaces to be able to fulfill your thoughts. You've got to let the enemy know, I, I, I've got no other options. Where, where I'm going, where I'm directing myself, where my heart is, where I'm laying at, it is in Christ and Christ alone. I'm not picking up some other things. I, I'm not going to do some stuff that's illegal. I'm not going to start cheating and, 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 and going the wrong way. I have no other options but to trust in Jesus. If you're a Christian, you know that there's, there's no other way. The best way is God Christ. The best way is Jesus, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. Point number two I want to explain to you is, is go back and try again. 
wherever you might have feel you're failing in life, wherever you feel like things are just breaking apart, can I tell you, don't give up, but try again. Go back to where it is. Go back and connect. Have the opportunity and say, I'm not going to let go. God has called me to something, and I'll fulfill it wherever he's called me to do it. So go back and try again. Don't give up. Don't quit. Go back. Look at it. Find yourself and say, Lord, whatever it is that you have for me to do, I won't give up. I won't let go. I won't let go of the plan. I won't let go of the purpose. I won't let go of the destiny. What you planted on the inside of me, I will do it if you call me to do it. Today, there's some things that we've got to let go, but there's some things that God has called us to that we should never let go of. And I'm here today to let you know if God has called you to something, stay with it. If you failed at it the first time, go back again and go back again and go back. And you're like, like, Pastor, how many times should I go back? You go back until God gives you access to the next season. You go back until God gives you access to the next thing. You go back until God opens the next door. But don't you take option B and C. Option B, God did not plan an A and B and C life for you. God planned one life for you, and that is for you to prosper, for you to have hope, for you to have a future. So don't give up on the life that God has called for you for a second option and an option C. Don't you look for anything else. Stay focused. Stay connected in what God has called for you to do. Don't go back, but try again. And point number three is become who you're supposed to be. I can tell you today right now, John 10 and 10 says, for the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have that life to the full. I say to you today, everything in this moment, the enemy is trying to cancel your assignment. He's trying to cancel your destiny. He's trying to cancel your purpose. He's trying to cancel everything and every blessing that God has in store for you. You cannot forfeit the blessing just because you got tired. Don't forfeit what God has in store for you just because you're you're weary or you have anxiety. I'm here today because I truly believe that God wants you to go further than you've ever gone before It's not about achieving a goal. This is what I wrote. It's all about becoming who God has called me to be. Become who God has set you up to be. Become who God has strategized you to be. Live in the moments of what God is speaking in your heart. And I want to say this to you today. There are opportunities that the enemy is looking for in this season of what you're doing to bring doubt and to bring fear and to pull you out of focus of where you should be today. I'm trying to tell you, it, it, it's, it's all a strategic plan to get us all focused, but I, I want you to really, as the Bible says, collect your mind together. Gird up the thoughts and the uh, uh, ideas of your mind and strengthen yourself in the place where God can use you right where you are and say, I'll stay here and I'll fulfill the will. And you, sometimes you'll pray and you'll go to the Father and you'll say, Lord, if I can be honest, if, if this cup can pass from me, then let it pass. But truth of the matter is, is not my will, but thy will be done. Today, you want God's will done in your life. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you with everything inside of me, don't you forfeit the blessings that God has for you. Don't you forfeit the, 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 the very things that God has established just for you. The Bible says there are things in heaven that should be taking place on earth just for you. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Don't you let go of what heaven's blessings are for you today. And I truly believe this. God will move and direct you and give you an understanding of who you are today. This is not about a goal. This is not about an achievement. This is about being who God has called for you to be. And so in this moment, God is staring you. God, he he slowed you down. God is allowing you to see where you are. And I think one of the greatest things in these seasons is that God is allowing you to see who is your source. Maybe you didn't understand who your source was. Maybe you didn't understand what your source of hope was and your source of strength and your source of joy and your source of peace. It's not in your money. It's not in what you're driving. It's not in your job. It's not in the things that you can do out in the world. It is in Christ and Christ alone. So today... 
we encourage you here. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it regardless of what it feels like. You're going to make it today because God has something special for you. And God has a plan that's already established. And what God has established, there is nothing that the enemy can do about it. It's already set in place. Well, today, I believe that you should be encouraged beyond belief because I believe today that God is going to move in a way in your life like you've never seen them move before. If, we, if, if you're open at this moment, we just want to take this time to be able to pray with you. Father, we thank you so much that you care and you love us the way that you do. Father, we thank you because we have hope in you. And we have joy in you. And we have peace in you. And for those that are in this world that are, are lacking that peace and that joy, Father, I pray today that they would have it. And I pray today that we would offer it to them. Let us not be in community with people who don't know you and let us miss offering you to them. Father, it, it, it's not the job that's going to save them. It's not, it's not the things that is going to keep them. It is the peace of God that surpasseth all understanding. Because I believe, Lord, we will find ourselves at this place again. And it's not the things of this world that will keep us, but it truly is your love. For we love you, we honor, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here today and you want to make this decision to follow Jesus, you say, Pastor, what does this look like? It's, it's just you opening your heart to what God can do on the inside of you. I, I know you may feel desperate and you may feel lonely and you're like, is this another thing just to try to hype me up? One thing I can let you know, Jesus is the best way. Jesus is the only way. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And everything you need in the Father is here today. I promise you, you can get the job back. You can get the car. You can get the money back. But you won't have peace without Jesus today. So as that is you and you want to follow him, you want to give him your whole heart. You want to say, I want to stop relying on this world to be my comfort. And I want to rely on Jesus today. If that's you, I want to pray a prayer with you. And I say this to you. It's not the prayer that saves you. But it truly is the posture of your heart. Can you repeat after me? Can you say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for accepting me just as I am. Forgive me for my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I commit to putting you first in my life. Take control of the throne of my life and make me who you want me to be. In Jesus' name, we say amen. We celebrate you so much for what God is doing in your life. And we truly believe this moment is a moment where God is going to minister to you. And after this video, you're, you're going to see a little bit later in it that we're going to offer an opportunity for you to get to know God a little bit more and just directions on what's the next step for you today. I truly believe that God has more than you can imagine or think. And we just want to speak that and, and, and just minister to you in this moment of what God is doing here today. I will build my We truly believe that God is the firm foundation and that you've been called to put your trust in him. I can tell you this. The world will fail you. The systems, the government, what you believe is the strength of what's holding you, it will let you down. But Jesus will never let you down. He will never fail you. 
He will never miss the moment to care for you like you're supposed to be cared for. And, and this week that we're about to take, which is Passion Week, is, is just an opportunity for us to relive the moments of what Christ has done for us. And what he's done for me, he can do the same for you. We love you. We're praying for you. And we're believing God to do more than you could ever imagine or think. God bless you, and we'll see you soon. That message was crazy yeah. from Pastor Marcus. Pastor Marcus, you'd be killing that junk. <laughs> um, if you've taken a courageous step to give your life to the Lord for the first time, text the word forgiven to 94,000. We'd love to send you some resources and celebrate this awesome decision that you've made. That's right. This is the decision of a lifetime. God has an amazing plan for your life, and none of what we do would be possible without you. Together, we all get to be the hands and feet of Jesus, and we get to spread hope in all the world. Yeah, we do. So we encourage you to give by texting MIX to 77977. Again, give at MIX to 77977. It's because of your giving that we've been able to provide bad lunches to children in our entire community all week long. And we'll continue to be a beacon of light and a hope in our city during this challenging time. Again, if you're a first time guest, text MIXFTG to 94000 so we can thank you for joining us today and stay in touch with you. For more information about what we're doing as a church, check out our website, themixchurch.com, as well as our Instagram and Facebook. And be sure to download the Mix app because the Mix app is going to be a central piece in staying part of the mix. We know that things are changing by the day and feeling really uncertain, but continue to pray and spread hope instead of fear. We believe that as we pray, God will strengthen our hearts. If you'd like us to pray with you, text pray for you to 94,000. Okay, so pray the, the number four and then like the like capital letter U to 94,000. Yeah. And we'll do just that. And as our online experience comes to a close, we are gonna take a moment to pray with you right now. Dearling Father, thank you so much for yet another beautiful day that we get to just worship you and hear your words. So thank you so much for our pastors bring, um, brought just such a great word to us today. And thank you for this opportunity to spend this time virtually with you. Uh, thank you for all you're doing in the world right now, Jesus, in your heavenly name, amen. Amen. God bless you all, and we'll see you next week. Peace.